Bust? Oh, yes, I said. I'm Yorkshire born, all right. Mm. As any cricket There's follower knows, you can be the greatest cricketer ever to walk the earth. But if you aren't Yorkshire born, you'll never play for the county. Darren Layman. He then yeah. asked me if I was on my own. <laughs> oh, you I won the championship. My father well. and Cyril Turner were with me, and I pointed out where my father was sitting. I followed him over, and Dad stood up and took off his cap. Mm. This is Mr. Hurst, Dad, I said. Yes, I know who it is, said Father, mm. and shook hands with him warmly. Mm. By the throat. I realized when he took his cap off, mm. that was a great moment for him, but typically he never said a thing about it afterwards. That's a nice story. Yeah, it is. <laughs> now, the thing is, they don't start saying horrible things, but a nice way. story. It was a nice story. Now, uh, the trouble is Brian Close. You, you know, you hit Brian Close with the ball. One of the balls hit Brian Close. Mm. And Brian Close didn't know Fred from Adam, did he? Not in those days. And no. he went up to him and he said, Who are you? Etc. Etc. To bowl at me like that. And, well, guess what? This Fred? man was being so blasé into the bargain that I was really furious. Together. I'm always ready to coach anybody from I'm international to schoolboy cricketers. Because I feel You're an obligation to, do, to do so. In spite of all my troubles, I know I owe the Gilliam of cricket a great deal. And I'm willing to put something back. Yes. What? Well, it's a couple of uh, Fred's reports. Uh, probably our favourite in a moment. But first, this was another one that we all quite liked. There was no welcome at Headingley for me anymore. The year after I retired... I dropped in to ask for a couple of tickets for a test match. Freeloading. And the secretary asked me what made me think I was entitled to tickets. Okay, I told her that 67 tests and 307 test wickets right. seemed a fair reason. You got paid, though? But I would be happier <laughs> if she stuck them up her backside and walked out. Oh, nice. That'd be difficult, wouldn't it? <laughs> think. You wouldn't be able to use them. Oh, buy any, no. buy any spares. <laughs> oh, dear. It'd be easy to anyway. Uh, <laughs> now, yes, this is, the, this is probably our... This is our favourite. It's quite sad, really, but uh, Fred, uh, I don't know. He, well, it's his first marriage who went wrong. His first marriage went wrong, but he's very happy now, and he admits he did stray. Well, he kind of... Well, he put it in his own terms. Yeah, he certainly did. Here he is, Freddie Truman. If things were going better for me on the cricket field at the end of the 50s, they certainly weren't at home. In fact, my marriage was beginning to break up. On reflection, I suppose it was inevitable. I met Enid in 1951 at a cocktail party given by her father, who was the mayor of the Scarborough at the time. We married in 1955 and set up a house in West Ayton, outside Scarborough. And that well. The first five years or so passed by happily enough. I worked hard at trying to make the marriage a good one. I believed in family life and had been raised to regard marriage as a contract for life. There was nothing I could do about it, being away from home when we travelled to play other counties. And the six-month tours abroad placed a tremendous strain on our relationship. Mm. Cricketers are human. When you're used to a healthy, marital relationship, it's more than flesh and blood can stand to go without sex for six whole months. <laughs> <I'm telling you laughs> right? Contract for life. Ian had never accused me of sleeping with other women on the tours. Mm. But she was an intelligent woman. There you go. And must have known that I had had the, the odd bird. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back to Christmas again. <laughs> yes, old oh, friend. It's now, um... Because these other, well, we're not going to play these other bit, are we? No. no, no well, I mean, no, no, I mean, Fred's mantra every day. Have you have you done any coaching since you left uh, the game at all? No. Uh, I once said to a couple of young bowlers about this, do this, do that, and they said to me, all our yesterdays. So I said, get on with it, and that oh, was the end right. of it. Thank all right. You. And I watch people today bowling. I don't know who's coaching them. So you didn't feel an obligation to do so or anything like that, really? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. So we can do it in the end. <laughs> anyway, thanks to Fred for other the entertainment. <laughs> yeah, we've still got quite a bit left of the other one. Liam said to me, we're only on. Everybody, uh... Let's put our cards on the table right from the start. Okay. This is an unashamedly nostalgic and sentimental look at some of the figures that I have known during my time in the game. <laughs> See, he does say players that I have known. It's that thing of putting in H. The first British Prime Minister I met was Sir Anthony Eden, oh. the first Earl of Avon. Oh. As a very small boy visiting the cinema, I'd seen him on newsreels as a handsome foreign secretary. Oh. It never occurred to me that I would one day meet him. Oh. 
<laughs> Years later, during the 59-60 tour of the West Indies, during a match against the Leeward Islands in Antigua, yeah. I was astonished when Sir Anthony appeared, oh. sat down and asked if we would like to have lunch with him. Even so Next play. day, a limousine was <laughs> sent to Mrs. Wright. <laughs> Sir Anthony was staying in a splendid villa with a pool fed by the sea. It was the perfect place to relax. Yeah. We had coffee, oh. a swim, mm -hmm. lunch, oh. and another swim. Oh, yeah. 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 We talked a lot about lingers like old prunes. He told us how. <laughs> In 1956, he had sought the views of Commonwealth countries before awarding Len his knighthood. I felt I had been let into some kind of state secret. I wrote home to my family rather excitedly to tell them about the meeting. Come on. This is the first time we've heard from you for about three years. Yes. Where are you? <laughs> yes. Stop hanging around with those posh people and come home. What are you talking about? Me really? with one very sobering thought. Who did? And the Freddie, that's it. He said, you are truly... A great fast bowler, but there's just one problem. Yeah, you're not hostile enough. Oh, so I hit him in the mouth, and he had to be carried off. <laughs> <laughs> that was seamless, wasn't it? Oh, lovely bit of editing there by the plowman, but I, I feel it worked. That was done. That we, we normally did those in house, but that one we needed to get right, so we sent it after George Lucas's company. <laughs> Was it the industrial earthworks? No, it was yeah, dream work. Industrial light and magic, whatever they call it. <laughs> yeah. That cost about four hundred thousand pounds. They edit. Let's, hear it, let's hear it again. It's honestly, it's <laughs> seamless. He left me with one very sobering thought. Freddie, he said, you are truly a great fast <laughs> bowler, no, but there's just one problem. You're not hot. Well, thanks very much, George. I hit him in the mouth. He had to be carried off. <laughs> Tee shot. It's a forty-five. Paul Spear and Jacobs. <laughs> Fred always in a shirt and tie, which meant he could mingle with the, the aristocracy, as he does today. Through the years, there were dozens of minor clashes at cocktail parties and receptions. Some of the honours distributed among the cricket establishment and a few favoured players were ludicrously ill-deserved. There was no way I was going to dress some men as sir or their wives as lady. That's right. I had seen at first hand the way they had behaved on tour and elsewhere, and they deserved no respect from me or anyone else. Tell them, Fred. What if they were so Generally, so. the newer the title or honour, the more talking. conscious they were of it. Hmm. Some of the real aristocracy were far easier to get along with. His Grace, the Duke of Norfolk. Oh, they call him His Grace. <laughs> His appointment as manager of the Australian tour oh. in 62-3 <laughs> astounded practically everybody in cricket and out of it. It was an amazing joke, hmm. but not really his fault. He was a very pleasant man, yeah. a real gentleman, mm -hmm. and he was tremendously keen about cricket. I just had one confrontation with the Duke. It happened at Melbourne when Someone. he called out, Truman, come here. Oh, oh yeah. Sort of I wasn't going to take that sort of treatment. <laughs> no. Not even from him. I can guess what happened. I told him. I had a dog at home I spoke to like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He took it very well indeed. And we finished up the best of friends. He gave me a biscuit together. from his hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I rolled him back Surely, and tickled me belly. Surely he was his WG grace, wasn't he? I think he would have been, yeah. He's been a bit yeah. in the cricket envelope. But there was one toff he couldn't stand. Monocle. How, oh, how? <laughs> really? Big buck tea. Oh, yeah, the yeah. worst kind of uh, Lord inbred like this. toff. He couldn't stand him. And he said, who are you? And et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and are there a pair of Manolos? And all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and all that sort of thing. Truman, come here. Come here, Polish Truman. Manolos. Come here, Truman. Polish Polish my Manolos, and well, you don't say that to Fred, you can guess what happened next. <laughs> this man was being so blasé into the bargain that I was really furious. And I'm afraid I hit him in the mouth and he had to be carried off. There we are, Fred's back tomorrow, so...